All right guys, so today's workout is a 22 mile workout. This is the last big marathon paced workout uh, of this build, of this prep. Right now we are three weeks out from the Buffalo New York Marathon. About maybe a little bit more than one week of, of, of work, big work still before we start to taper. But today's workout is a two mile warm up and there's a two mile cool down. In between there, it is 18 miles of work. So it is six times this set right here, which is one mile at a 650 minute per mile pace and then two miles at a 620 minute per mile pace. So you have these, this three mile kind of rep and you do that six times. So 18 miles of work plus the two miles in the front, two miles in the back. We got 22 miles total. So that's the workout for today. The temperature and dew point calculators say that if you're at 50 degrees, then if your goal is to hit 630 pace for 18 miles with a tempo effort, it says that there would be a zero second per mile adjustment at 50 degrees. But the current dew point is 72 degrees. The current air temperature is 74 degrees Fahrenheit. You plug that in for 18 mile tempo effort, the adjustment and I kid you not, the adjustment is 15 seconds a mile. So what it says is, is if you ran 645 pace, theoretically that's the equivalent to running 630 pace if it was 24 degrees cooler. Okay. So if people are wondering uh, what the impact of heat and humidity is on performance in um, uh, uh, endurance sports, um, this is what we're talking about. So when people say, well, I love the heat, I always tell them, well, yeah, you might love the heat, but your body doesn't. Um, we can't uh, short circuit physiology. We can't uh, um, do an end around around what sort of mother nature does and how she designed us to perform. Um, so, you know, heat is a real thing. And so if we're able to hit pace today in this, um, it means that you're actually averaging 15 seconds a mile faster if you can get into 50 degree air. So let's talk nutrition for today's workout. The last three days, I started fueling up for this workout. And as I've talked about, what I like to do is treat these workouts like they are race day. So the last three days, carbed up, and as we carb up for the Buffalo New York Marathon, we're going to record and document to show you guys what that looks like. But in terms of today, so I woke up at 4.30 a.m. As soon as I woke up, I went to the kitchen, and I started fueling up. That was an English muffin, peanut butter, banana, and honey. As soon as I ate that, I mixed up two scoops of G1M Sport, three scoops of BPN electrolytes. The goal was to get around 2,500 milligrams of sodium, about 90 to 120 minutes out from this run. What that does is it boosts blood volume, and it makes a huge difference in the workout. After I consumed that, between the English muffin, G1M Sport, electrolytes, I have been sipping on more electrolytes. So there's 2,000 milligrams of sodium in here. I have four scoops of BPN electrolytes. So I've been sipping on this slowly, but I'll also have this for during the run. And then during the workout, I'm using the spring energy gel. So I have four of these. I will consume one at mile four, eight, 12, and 16. The one thing you don't want to do on a workout or a marathon or a race is bonk. And what happens when you bonk is you're not fueled. You don't have the electrolytes, you don't have the carbs, you don't have the nutrition. And a lot of people bonk on runs. I mean, I've bonked on runs before. The way to do that, the days leading up to, carb load, which what that does is tops off muscle and liver glycogen. You have store carbs you can tap into for these longer workouts. Have some carbohydrates before the workout, especially sodium. And then during the workout itself, you gotta keep consuming, you gotta keep fueling. So when you're running on fumes, that's when you bonk. So, it is now about 6.30 a.m. We're about to kick it off.
This marathon prep is our way of helping you reach your goals by showing you what we are doing to accomplish ours. Throughout this series, leading up to the Buffalo New York Marathon, we will provide you the tools, resources, and knowledge to PR your next race. Training as a hybrid athlete has taught me so much about endurance, from marathons and Ironman triathlon and 100 mile ultra trail races. I'm now setting the goal to run a sub 250 marathon. It's time to lean in and go one more. So we're about a mile and a half in right now, just to the warm up. You can already tell, but very, very humid. Like typically it takes a few miles for me to start sweating, feel some moisture, but mile and a half in, like forehead sweating, you can feel sweat all across my body. So it's, it's a consideration for today's workout. It's gonna be hot, it's gonna be humid. We're just kicking it off. However, it's not an excuse. It's just a factor to consider during the work. first hour is gonna be, I don't wanna say a breeze, but you know, if he's in control, he should be fine. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens in the last eight miles to seven, down to seven, six miles of this middle 18 mile segment, because that's when the effects of the heat, the humidity, and this, the general fatigue start kicking in. But for now, he looks really, really smooth. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, let's dial it back to 650, even 655. Let's really sort of preserve your energy a little bit. Okay. You know, just sort of dig in and hit splits, okay? Yep. All right, look good. You look good. He's running some fast splits. If he could do this, this weather, I mean, that's almost bionic man stuff. Pretty pretty amazing. It, a lot of it's his preparation. A lot of it is his um, um, attention to detail. And it really, really should hit home that, um, good things don't happen by accident that are a result of preparation and it's what happened in the 48 hours prior to this with the uh, calories the composition of the calories um, um, the hydration the fueling that then allows the body to weather the elements a lot better than if you show up ill prepared so it's the name of the game
right now we are halfway through the workout. We're, uh, we're three iterations in. We got three left. Right now, feeling fairly fatigued from the heat and humidity, um, but legs still feel fresh, it's just hot. I hate to keep trying to tell him, slow down, slow down, slow down, because it's not even in his nature. I mean, the man does not have any bit of slow down in his DNA anywhere. Really pull back and just understand 620 to 625 would be fine on the next couple of quick miles. Okay. The trick is just getting to the end of the workout and finishing solid, not trying to kill yourself. Good. Good job, man. Good, good, good. So he is almost at the end of the first mile of the fast segment on the fourth set. So we're actually starting to get within sniffing distance of feeling like we're getting uh, uh, toward the end of this workout and he's still hitting pace. Um, this is one of the more impressive things I've seen in my, in my coaching career, this workout, if I'm being honest. Uh, we just checked at 75 degrees, 93% humidity right now. On the first mile of the fifth set, let's run, let's run over seven minutes on this one. Okay. Okay, let's run 7.05. Nick is out here cranking out sub 620 miles. You know, it's a testament to fortitude, it's a testament to preparation um, and talent. We don't need to discount that. Uh, but this is a really impressive workout. It's incredibly difficult, but it's preparatory in two major respects, mentally and then of course physically. But um, when you accomplish something really, really difficult in suboptimal conditions, it's purely preparatory for anything difficult on the horizon, any difficult goal that you've got out in front of you. And so um, by getting through today and it not being a negative, all it does is exponentially stack positives. So I'm fired up. I'm really happy with this. Okay, hey, just dial it back and just really, really try to recharge on this mile. What did you hit those last two? 617. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. That's, that's, that's a six flat, 602 equip. Good job, Nick. Man, it's warm, guys. It's warm, and that sun just came through, and so it's gonna be pretty unrelenting the next five miles. But um, we're 13 miles, almost 13 miles into the 18-mile sort of workout segment of this 22-mile run. So, man, it's getting hot, guys. We're gonna hit 100 degrees in Texas today. All right, last set right here, three more miles. this point the, the goal has been largely achieved for the day I mean the points proven so right now it's just about finishing the workout up not going so deep into the well that you spend an extra 72 hours 
you know, uh, trying to recover. You don't want to spend too much time in the recovery zone here in the last 20, 21 days prior to the marathon. But we got three weeks after this until he has to race. So there's going to be plenty of time to recover from this workout. This is one of the best uh, workouts that I've seen on this 22 mile uh, workout that I like to assign typically two to three weeks out from a marathon for a lot of people uh, One of the best performances I've ever seen all things considered. Uh, it's pretty incredible Just a one foot in front of the other proposition. It seems well duh, but at this point, just take it one stride at a time, get to the next lamp post, the next tree. Don't try to bite off the final two miles all at one time. What was the last two miles? 12 what? 621, 621. Going into that last set, you would have taken 621, 621. Yeah. You were bargaining. You're like, hey, you know what? Just give me 621, 621, I'll take it. Yeah, I mean, Nick. That was tough. Oh, well. Yeah, I mean, it was going to be tough. Uh, we just checked it 77 degrees with 87% humidity right now. Yeah, I could feel it. I could feel it mile one. We still got to do the two mile cool down right now, but. That was a tough workout. You know, I, I, I knew it was gonna be a tough workout coming into it, regardless of the weather. The weather, the humidity, the heat, definitely kicked it up a notch. But when I show up to a workout and I'm, I'm supposed to hit 620 paces, no matter what the weather is, and, it, and Jeff was trying to pull me back and restrain me the whole time, but I have a hard time where like, if we went into this workout with the standard, I'm hitting that standard. And it's really hard for me to disassociate factors that we could control and manipulate to facilitate a, a just as good workout. But I think we had a great workout today. Hit my splits, hit the splits I wanted to. Um, it was tough though, I mean, Josh called me last night and he's like, hey, remember like, there's a big difference between the 20 mile workout and the 22 mile workout. The 20 mile workout we did like four weeks ago. Right. He said, there's a big difference between that and all of a sudden it's gonna creep up on you and you're gonna feel it. And I think it was around mile, probably 10 or 11, that I could be like, all right, I, I, I remember what Josh said. It's creeping in a little bit. And like mile 16, you're like, yep, fatigued. But we did it, we accomplished the mission to the standard. I'm happy, I think Jeff's happy, so. Beyond happy, beyond happy. That was a fantastic workout. Um, accomplished everything we wanted and then some today so we're looking really really good headed into this last three weeks yep the thing about these workouts is you have to show up with intention you have to intentionally show up to the workout you can't just walk into these workouts I've learned that the hard way you have to go to bed you have to wake up 
knowing what you're about to accomplish the next morning. But if you wake up, go through the rhythms, try to walk into that workout with no purpose, no intention, you're gonna miss, you're gonna fail, and you're gonna be really disappointed in yourself. The key, I'm telling you, the key is preparation and the key is intentionality. So you averaged 628 a mile uh, for the middle 18 miles. Uh, but keep in mind when you're going up, down, up, down the way you were, that your pace per mile average is gonna be actually slower than if you ran an even pace the whole way. Cause that's the hard way to average 628 cause you're throwing in some 645 to seven minute miles uh, once every three miles. So just looking at your raw data, the 628 pace is exactly 249 marathon speed is what you average for the middle 18. That bodes really, really well because um, on that workout, I find that you can average what you average for the middle 18 miles for a full 26, um, sort of on a, 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 a predictable scale. And you can even bring that down a few seconds a mile because of the fact that it's slower going up, down, up, down. So even in the heat and humidity today, uh, the workout was dead on. What you need to run for me to say that you're in sub 250 marathon shape. That's basically what the raw data tells me on that workout. So you think, After years of seeing people do that workout. So you think as of right now, we're in sub 250 shape? We are in sub 250 shape right now. Now, we call it sports because nothing is a given, mm -hmm. right? But the reality is you have done everything that you have to do for us to arrive at your taper right where you needed to be to accomplish the goal. And at the end of the day, when you're scripting this out, especially coming out of a hundred mile race where you don't really know how good your recovery is going to be. And there's some factors that are a little bit, not necessarily out of our control, but we sort of don't know. Mm. I'm really, really happy with exactly the spot we're in 21 days before race day, hands down. Well, you heard it guys. We are about three weeks out from Buffalo, New York. This, this was the last really big workout. It was a confidence booster, especially showing up today with this weather. But like I said before, there are going to be factors along any prep. Small injuries, something comes up in life, something happens to your family, you take on more stress at work, you show up for a big workout and it's hot and it's humid, your cat died, whatever it is, shit's gonna happen in your life. And instead of using that as an excuse, just keep driving through it. There's gonna be obstacles all the time, just run right through the obstacle, we're on track, we just gotta keep showing up for another three weeks, brick by brick, stacking them. Buffalo, New York, here we come. All right guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Marathon Prep. If you liked it, please like it, subscribe if you're new and comment below. And if you haven't seen the last video I uploaded right here, which are my top 10 favorite pieces of running gear. So check this out and we'll see you guys in the next video.